So I'm here at 50 meters and I'm going to be doing a bit of testing today, torque testing, to potentially and hopefully show why I was using this grip back in the day when I shot the Formula RX. You've seen a few pictures of me at World Cups and stuff shooting various different RXs. One of them was a blackout RX with this bright green grip on it that's extended back. As you can see, quite a considerable amount here on the, uh, the pivot point actually lengthens my draw length out. That is not why I shot it. And here at 50 meters, I'm gonna do a bit of torquing on the bow, not twerking, but torquing, and uh, see what happens. I got a camera down range, so you'll be able to see the impact points the whole time. And basically what I'm going to do, first I'm gonna sight in, because that's important. And uh, then I'm gonna to torque the bow and shoot three arrows with torque to the right, three arrows with torque to the left on a stock grip, put my fancy grip on, and uh, do the same thing and see what happens. You're watching the Jake Minsky YouTube channel. All right, I'm gonna go get those arrows, and then I'll start torquing the bow, see what happens in impact. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to shoot three arrows, torquing the bow to the right, three to the left, and uh, the important part is I'm keeping my string alignment the same. I'm making sure that I put it in the same spot as that I normally do. Unfortunately, I kind of ignore it, and the black string really disappears, luckily for me, but I'll do my best to pay attention to it and at least put it in the same place when I'm torquing it to the right and the left. You'll see it's going to be tricky and difficult for me, but I'll do the best I possibly can. The up and down impact points will definitely change uh, because I will add slightly different pressures up and down accidentally when I'm trying to torque it to the right or the left. So that's to the right. To the right. And to the right. It's pretty consistent to the right there. I can't torque the bow a ton because I have no grip tape on this grip at all, so my hand is sliding a lot. It is Florida and it's a bit humid. So it's not perfect to the right. Uh, a little tough to do, actually. Now to the left as much as I can. That's to the left. To the left. And to the left. So let's see there. So actually fairly consistent. Uh, torquing to the right on this Formula RX 27 inch with medium limbs, stock grip. I hit eight ish to the right. Torquing to the left, I hit eight seven ish to the left. So I'm gonna put my fancy Jolly Rancher grip on here, nice and bright. That extends my pivot point back a very specific particular amount. And I'm gonna do the same test. And hopefully I get the same results that I get when I put this grip on normally. I have high expectations, and I'm really hoping this works out. It's been a long time since I've shot it though, so yeah. Now we're going back. 
No idea where the clicker should be. Hopefully it's gonna be close. I'll probably shoot one end to sight in and make sure the clicker is set because I don't want to be struggling with that and dealing with torquing and string alignment and all that crap all at the same time. So I'm gonna do the best here just to isolate as much as possible and get a good clean test out of this again. All right, I'm gonna go get them, but I figured I'd give you a quick close up of the gander at this beauty. Pretty serious. A little different than uh, than your standard grips. Yeah. See what happens here. Please work. All right, I'm gonna do that same thing. Three to the right, three to the left. Move that side up a little bit first. Try to do the same amount of torque and definitely keep my string alignment. That is key, but it is hard. Hmm. Hitting a little high. I think it's just the sight being off a bit. But also when you induce torque, at least for me, I, I tend to heal it a little bit differently or put more pressure into the throat. So the up and down, can't really pay attention to. The whole point is trying to look at how much the arrows deviate from the center when you torque the bow here. All right, so all three of those torque to the right. I argue that I can get more torque on this bow because it extends that grip back. So I feel like I can leverage the front of the riser more. Although there has been some testing that uh, Thomas and I have been doing actually, and potentially it's actually harder to torque the bow despite having more surface area. It's interesting. Lots of data coming out, lots of things coming out. Subscribe, do subscribe, and do sign up for the mailing list at jkaminski.com. It's, it's gonna be big. All right, now three to the left. I was really unhappy with that torque. You can hear it. So that first one was that left eight, I believe. That look, that next one looks like a left ten or so. Those two were like left ten edge, left or right. So it's really 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 close uh, to right where I would hope it to be. I'm actually very happy and very relieved that this happened. This is why I needed to find one of these risers to reconfirm my tests. I now am going to be slotting this grip in the front here, the hole, slot the holes, and stacking these shims that I have cut up underneath the grip to adjust this distance to make sure that when I'm done when I torque the bow as hard as I want to the right or to the left, all the arrows still go in the middle. I'm gonna do this, this test here again, one more end, just to see if there was any sort of mistake, any sort of error on my part. Uh, with the grip in this position, I'm gonna do it one more time, but uh, I'll give you a slightly different perspective on camera so you can just kind of see what I'm doing to the bow and uh, see a little bit more in depth and detail as to what I'm doing, but keep that camera running down range for you. All right, we're back here with a fresh set of arrows, six arrows. I'll do the same thing, torque three to the right, torque three to the left, and uh, just give you a better, closer up view as to seeing the difference in the grip here, just so you can see. To the 
right? To the right. To the right. Now three to the left. So I don't know if you can see that, but I am torquing the heck out of this bow left and right, very different amounts. And as you can see, compared to that first end, you know, there was a spread between the two groups with the stock grip about this far, give or take. With my grip and the geometry I'm working on, it's down to about this, half as much, a third as much, uh, maybe even less than that. It's just so hard to see my string alignment, so hard to keep it. I might put a peep sight on the boat actually, kind of eliminate that problem, but I'm gonna do a little bit more testing on my end and come up with a final perfect spot. And uh, I'm excited to show you why, hopefully in the very near future. Yeah, I made a little adjustment here on the grip. Changed the camera so you can see a better angle, maybe see a bit more of my torque. I am not going to cut this scene at all, so you'll see that I am torquing it. You just gotta trust that I'm aiming in the middle, I am, and I'm keeping my string alignment the same. I'm all about honesty. I'm not gonna smoke and mirror hide anything from you here. And I'm gonna do my best to shoot six good shots, three torquing to the right, three torquing to the left. And then without cutting it, I will carry you down range so you can see the impact points. Because I removed the camera that was down there. But I made some adjustments and I'm really happy with the results. So that's to the right. I'm gonna do three that way. Now when I made a little mistake, it's really hard to shoot good shots while doing this kind of stuff. It's just tough. but it was still within the gold here at 50 on an 80 centimeter face. Okay, so that was three to the right. Now I'll do three to the left. And hopefully from this perspective, you can actually see how much the torque changes. For me, it's quite a bit, I can see a half inch to an inch of sight pin change left and right past the sight window as I torque it each direction. And you can tell that my sight bar is in a little bit further than I normally run it. This is just where I did pack back in the past. So um, I just wanted to replicate this for this specific test here. All right, three to the left. The left is much harder to manage. Little mistake there. Definitely pushed it up. That was better. Still a little up. But again, the left and right is what's important. Okay, I'm gonna take you down there. Again, I'm not gonna cut the footage. So forgive uh, the Blair Witch Project here. Now, I did this before as I cut the video uh, and you know wanted to cut it before. 
and I continued to do this after making some adjustments and I just shot six arrows no wider than the 10 ring here on an 80 centimeter face at 50 meters. So surprisingly, even for me, good results. So I'm really, really happy about this and I can show you just because I know which arrow went where based on these torques, but can you tell which one went which direction? so close. These two, to the right, good shots, made a mistake, still torqued to the right. The one I, first one said I pushed up, that was torqued to the left. Uh, the next one, which was eh, and then the good one. So as you can tell, left to right spread. When I don't make mistakes, take away the mistakes. Yes, it's only six arrows, small testing pool. I will do it with a lot more arrows and plot these results, and I'll do it at 70 meters because it'll be so much more apparent. But uh, the four arrows that I shot well, they're actually not even wider than the X-ring here on a 50 cent 80 centimeter face at 50 meters. So exactly what I wanted, exactly what I wanted. So stay tuned.